hello, hello! Today I will be bringing you a much requested commentary featuring the T8 Russian DD, the Tashkent. Now, if you're wondering where my usual mods are, the patch just hit today, or well, overnight. So I have no actual mods, so it's just the usual vanilla game. At least this time people won't ask me, what mods are you running? Anyway, uh, I chose this game because well, it's a pretty goddamn nasty matchup for me. First of all, I'm against T10, which can happen quite often when you're in T8. Second of all, uh, we only have one spotting DD, and that's a Fubuki, and he's already sailing away to A, which on this map is a terrible cap to go to, and you should never go to it. And finally, of course, a lot of the enemy team recognize me. This includes two Chapayevs, so there's two radar cruisers, who are actively hunting me and the gearing recognizes me as well so he's hunting me so this is pretty much as close to a nightmare scenario as you can get for a Tashkent now usually I don't recommend going being the first guy into a cap in a Russian DD in fact going first one uh, as you can see in chat Flamo Somar Horny to kill you I just tell him how unusual because I'm pretty used to it by now anyway uh, Go, being the first guy into a cap is something I don't recommend as Russian DDs because you simply don't have a concealment to do it. The only reason I do it is, here is because our Fubuki is sadly running off to A, which is such a bad decision, so I decide it's better for me to go and back up this Habarovsk and at least we can two, two man anything that shows up here and we'll have a higher chance of securing this cap. Um, enemy Tashkent shows up, instantly shoot him, uh, wreck him a bit, but of course Chapaev shows up with radar. I instantly start moving, uh, sometimes you can wiggle and avoid any uh, shells and such if you have good concealment, but on a Russian cruiser, a Russian DD, sorry, it's better to rely on your speed. And the other Chapaev also shows up and they're both of course horny for me and the Habarovsk. Uh, so I'm just gonna bail. I can't risk going back into the smoke in case they pop the second radar I don't know if they're used one or two. I keep of course uh, I recommend you to call target on these cruises very often when you see ra uh, radar cruises um, Constantly if you see, look at the chat you can see concentrate fire concentrate fire uh, I keep hammering basically that button on these uh, Cruisers because I want my team to focus them down. It's very very important that my team gets rid of of the radar cruisers if they want us to have any sort of chance of winning this game. Now Fubuki of course already getting two man because he pushed alone into A which is quite silly. He should have just gone for B instead or something. Where Because we can't possibly even help him at A. He's all alone there. And now both the radar cruisers are here. None of them got actually killed even though they showed full broadside to my team. So this is gonna be quite tricky now. I'm already down to 13.3k HP and I've, we've been forced out of the cap once. I'm telling my team, kill the Chapas or this game is already lost. Now, Tashkent, how exactly do you play this though? Well, first of all, the first thing I said, contesting caps isn't something that you're particularly good at, and I'm only doing it in this game because, well, as I said, this game is a bit of a nightmare scenario, and I'm doing it out of necessity. In general, if you see a friendly DD push into a cap, you want to be his support, you want to be his backup. Uh, you sail one or two kilometers behind the your, your friendly DD, and then when your friendly DD gets spotted and he spots the enemy DD, you kind of get spotted at the same time, and then you help two man the enemy DD. You're kind of like the support DD in that sense. You you back up your body like that. Uh, now, okay, my Habarov's body died. This game it just got even harder. Now, um, if you're forced to do what I'm doing here, though. Um, you don't want to spend much time in the caps. You don't want to be sitting in smokes, uh, full broadside or anything, because you are a fairly big DD. The Tashkent is one of the larger DDs. You're quite easy to hit, you're very easy to torp, even though your speed is great, you don't exactly turn on a dime, and it can feel quite clunky in general. Now, Edinburgh has smoked up, and both the, all the, the other two DDs are on A, so in this case I am risking going into the smoke because, well, there's nothing here to torp me. Since, as you can see, both both the gearing and I think it's a Fubuki, both are on the other cap. So, sitting in caps and smokes is something I don't really recommend for this, but there are, of course, exceptions. This one, which I'm demonstrating right here, is one. If there was an enemy DD right outside, I would not. I would be much more hesitant, hesitant to go into the smoke, because the Edinburgh, to begin with, is a huge DD target if he's sitting in a smoke. Of course, I use HE, Angled North Carolina. Um, when you spec into Demolition Expert, which is the first perk I recommend going for, the first four-point perk, 
um, you actually get a fairly good uh, fire chance in the ship. I, in fact, with flags you can boost it up to 12%. And I'm wondering where our Donsko is, because the enemy is capping B. We have actually have one radar cruiser, so... Yeah, we actually have one radar cruiser, which is a Donsko, so hopefully he's somewhere around B, where he can actually use his radar to help the team. He is... Uh, where is he? Oh, he's here. Okay, so this Donsko is basically so out of position that his radar is completely useless. Which is unfortunate, which it, because it means the enemy will gain an even larger advantage. They kill both our DDs, and they are about to cap um, B as well. So we are definitely going to have a hard game in front of us. North Carolina just keeps reversing. I doubt I'll be able to finish him. Now, when you upgrade the torps on the Tashkent, you actually get 8k in torps, which are quite decent. They're, they're not, of course, they're not uh, Japanese DDs or anything of the sort. They're not Benson Torps either. Uh, but when you use them from behind cover, like here, uh, they can be fairly, fairly decent. And if someone is pushing towards you and you're sitting in a smoke firing, once again, fairly decent. But the majority of your damage will absolutely be coming from your guns. And when I see they're trying to flank us from here, so I go down here to slow it down a bit. Uh, pop a smoke here. You notice that I'm kind of behind cover. So if anyone... If anyone, one of the DDs that are at B, if uh, they try to torp me, they'll have a hard time doing it because there's a land mass right next to me. So I'm kind of using the land as my torpedo cover when I'm starting to fire here. And if he actually charges into C, well, uh, then he, I'll be angled towards his torp. So we won't have an easy time basically getting to me. The torps are launched at the Bismarck. I landed too. I got some fires on this Bismarck as well. So he burned to death. I'm going to see if I can finish this guy. I think it's flooding as well. Probably wasn't expecting any torps considering I'm the only DD that was left. Well, his mistake. That's that's his Hydra, I think. Yep, he's dead. Hydra's ran out. Now, I still have some time left on my smoke, but since I have been spotted in this smoke and there's still a gearing and a Fubuki left, I don't feel comfortable sitting in it. If the enemy DDs have a great idea where you are, uh, it's very risky to just sit around and wait for them. So instead of using cover in the terms of smoke, I'm just going to rely on maneuverability now. And of course, use my guns. Uh, big battleships are a fairly nice target for you when you use HE, because fires, of course, deal percentage damage. So, well, that's Scotty B. Well, this Tashkent is a good player. That's obviously the enemy gearing that's trolling me because he knows who I am. So I'm pretty sure he might be somewhere around. Or, well, he's probably hunting me, I would assume. Anyway, this Yamato, of course, I'm just going to keep harassing him. He's my next target. I think I got two fires and he repaired. So getting another fire on him would be very, very nice indeed. And that's kind of what you can do in the Tashkent. Even though it's a much malign DD, when you burn battleships, you do do a lot of damage to them. And you force their repair and you frustrate them. And this guy, you see, he's turning away. Not because he's taken any significant amounts of chunks of damage from anyone else, but mostly because I've set him on fire already. And that's another fire, and this one he can't repair. So he's he's fleeing because of a Tashkent, not because of anyone else doing anything particular to him here. He's even shooting at me, that's how frustrated he is. Oh, here's the gearing. He was hunting me, but he engaged too far away. And of course, as I've said, when you fight USDDs in a Russian DD, you want to turn away, you want to maintain your distance, you want to always keep full speed, and you want to angle away from him. I quickly drop my torps. And I keep angling away from him. Because, well, this 6km range is perfect for me. With my speed, his USDD arcs are going to struggle to hit me because I'm so goddamn fast. Especially since I'm constantly shifting my rudder back and forth. Whereas I have the easiest time of the world in the world hitting him. You see, I landed pretty much every single shot. That wasn't even a contest. So, USDDs, if they engage you, turn away, kite, keep on the move, use your speed and your superior guns. And even something like a gearing really isn't that big of a deal, as long as you don't charge him. The worst thing you can do to a USDD is charge him, because the closer you get, the more effective his guns become, because uh, close range, his DPM will overwhelm yours easily. Now, I'm, I was hoping to make it into this gearing smoke, to be able to basically hijack his smoke, since he just popped it. But there's just too much stuff on the way, and even a chopper is showing up. So I decide to finally use my last smoke. And I'm trying to get some fires going on this Yamato. This is, once again, something I just... You should always be firing. That's something I said in my original Kiev commentary, I think. Always, always, always keep firing. Your gun... If, if you're not shooting, 
then you're probably in a bad position and you're in general not really playing your Tashkent to its full potential. Here I of course switch to AP, full broadside battleship, you do a su surprising amount of damage even at this tier. Now the Udalo is where the AP really starts shining and the Udalo is where AP really starts to gain that massive massive oomph but even here the Stalinium is pretty obvious. You can see I'm doing what 2.5k to 3k per volley, which is not a bad amount of damage at all. And that's the Yamata dead. Chapa have spotted, instantly call target on him. Chapa have being around means that I don't dare to stay in the smoke though. He's already approaching radar range, so I am going to bail out of here. He's dropping some torps on the Yamato. Oh, and the Hipper is closing in. That's his radar, so I'm speeding out of here. I'm straight up out of here. Actually, I think he's... I think I was out of his range of his radar, so I could technically still stay in my smoke, but it's not worth the risk of going back there. Instead, I'm just gonna kite. Now, kiting, of course, um, you turn away, you shift your rudder a bit now and then, but mostly you focus on sailing full speed away and just keeping your guns going the entire time. I already forced the repair on this hipper, so I'm just gonna keep hammering him with HE. AP against broadside cruisers is fine, but in cases like this you wanna be using HE. Now I'm use focusing him instead of the Yamato because of cruiser of course is a higher threat to a DD than the Yamato is. So constant fire raining on him. Another fire on him. He's burning, he's really greedy for me, he's, you see he's trying to shoot me, both him and the Chapaya bar, but I'm constantly making these small shifts, and of course I'm using Tashkent's greatest strength, the speed, and he focused so hard on me, tunnel vision so hard on me, that well, basically he completely forgot about the rest of my team, who got a nice juicy broadside volley on him and probably citadeled him to shit. So, thank you very much, and I'll start working on the next one, the Chapaya. Chapayev, of course, is an excellent DD killer. I recently made a commentary on the Chapayev, just how strong the ship is. It has flat arcs and uh, flat arcs and fairly rail um, railgun type guns. So you want to keep very very long range, like I'm doing here. Even with long range, because I've taken so much damage earlier, I don't think I can actually kill him. So I'm just going to disengage towards my team and keep hammering him on the way. I, if I was full HP. Uh, I would feel a lot more confident, but considering I started this, this fight with a huge disadvantage, especially considering I have no more consumables left, I have no speed boost, I have no smoke, I have no, I don't have health, uh, so this this fight is probably skewed in his favor. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kite away from him and hammer him the best that I can. Managed to get a wither wither from the fire on him, which is of course always nice. Now at this point I'm out of his spotting range, so I'm gonna use the repair on the fire and disengage from this fight in general. I don't want anything to do with him anymore. I think it's time for me to start moving towards B and of course harass the Yamato some more. Yamato of course has a much harder time killing me than a Chapaev would and the Chapaev has eaten so much damage from both me and all the other guys who have been shooting him because well he's been wasting so much damage on me instead of using it on anyone else. So I'm gonna go harass the Yamato, my favorite target. In fact, any T10 battleship should be your favorite target uh, in a Tashkent. Being up tiered if you face a lot of battleships isn't necessarily a bad thing in this ship because, well, you have a lesser chance of fire, of course, but you can still harass them very, very hard. So there's my favorite buddy, Mr. Yamato again. Oh, the work is spotted. Send one wall his way, but I think he's already dead. Yes, he is. And what, wait, is this Yamato turning away again? It looks like he's turning away again. Well, I'm gonna give chase to him, of course. You, this is kind of the optimal distance you want to keep when you're low HP. Uh, at about 13 kilometers, you have a very easy time hitting him, but you have plenty of time to react and dodge any volleys coming your way. And this is, of course, the range you can re reach with both AFT and uh, upgraded range. It looks like he ate a massive citadel from something, so he's probably dead. And suddenly this game, which started out, well, disastrously, one might say, is suddenly shaping up to be a very nice game indeed. We're gonna be capturing B, they only have one chopper left. <laughs> this Yamato goes, shit team can't kill Tashkent. And I just give him a little smiley face in return. Because, yeah, he was pretty frustrated by my work. Anyway, of course I'll move towards B, and then I will move towards A, and the plan is of course to get some capture XP, because this game is at this point completely over. There's not much they can do to come back from this. 
it is Yamato is complaining that I'm camping. Uh, I was about to tell him, right, I should be ru rushing into Yamato as a Tashkent, but uh, I figured it's not really worth the effort. If someone, if someone complains about that, then well, you know, they just got outplayed fairly hard. The last chap I have, I think he's, I don't, I'm not really certain why he's running away so quickly I'm trying to save because of course with the fixed repair costs there's no point in saving your ship anymore, you don't actually save money on saving your ships, they fix that or change that. I don't know, can I even make the cap anymore? It's gonna be hard, but my HP, uh, 1k left, of course I have the HP boost as well. I'm of course building up on this guy to my classic 3x4 build, which you probably have seen uh, my Habarov's commentary, where I use the full, fully realized 3x4 build. Um, but so far I only have AFT and Demolition Expert on this, I don't have my HP boost yet. I think with the HP boost the Tashkent could be in fact quite terrifyingly strong. Well, very strong at least. Terrifyingly strong remains to be argued. But overall, with the differences with the HP, I actually kind of enjoy the Tashkent more than I enjoy the Kiev these days because the HP nerf to the Kiev has made it so incredibly fragile that it's not as fun to play anymore. Whereas this one is very very fun to play, the Tashkent. I've been enjoying it a fair amount actually. A nice amount of ch damage, a nice amount of kills, XP wise, uh, let's check the team score. A, it's always nice when a T8 Tashkent tops the scoreboard over Yamatos and Habarovsks and Kurfurst and all these, especially since the enemy team was actively trying to kill me and hunt me down. So that's of course extremely satisfying, kind of rubbing it in their faces while sue me. That was extremely satisfying. Detailed report. Well, kind of funny. Potential damage uh, or 1 million damage. That's basically shells that were shot at me. So there was 1 million worth of damage shelled my way, which, considering it, you know, I'm a DD, is pretty hilarious. Credits and XP, well, a nice chunk. Anyway, let's move on to my recommended build. Right, as usual, I will start with the modules. Now, I actually recommend getting the range module first, because I feel like range is such a bread and butter thing for this, especially since they nerfed the range on Russian DDs. I feel like getting that range upgrade ASAP is incredibly important. The hull is great, it gives you HP, it gives you rudder shift, it gives you a lot of things that are fantastic, but I still think the range is more important. So get the range first, then get the hull upgrade, and then upgrade the torpedoes so you can get 8 game drops. They are situational, but you saw I was still able to get some use out of them, so definitely recommended. I recommend premium repair and smoke, of course. If you can only afford one, get the premium smoke, since lower cooldown and additional smoke is more valuable. Uh, main armaments mod 1, aiming systems mod 1. Uh, propulsion, you don't want to be losing your engine because it takes you ages to slow down. Steering gears, and of course, finally, stealth to get to 8.2 without Captain Perk. And uh, Captain Perks wise, of course, uh, I'm going for basic farm training for that reload. Last stand, your gunboat, you should have last stand or your potato. Vigilance, because it's painful dodging torps in this big thing. AFT as the first four pointer, demolition expert as the second, and of course, once I get the points, it would be a survivability expert that would be the last one. This is, of course, my 3x4 build that I've spoken of quite a bit, which I really, really enjoy on Russian DDs. Anyway, that was my Tashkent commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs>